we now turn our attention to boxing and the upcoming lightweight contest, Jorge Linares versus Vasil Lomachenko. Um, this is going to be it's going to be a great fight. It's going to be a great event. I don't know if um, there's been much hype around it or sufficient hype around it for a fight of this magnitude. Jorge Linares, who, you know, of late has been uh, very impressive. Um, he's had victories over the likes of Anthony Crawler, victories over Luke Campbell. So he's dealt with well, he's beaten Crawler twice on points um, and then beaten Luke Campbell. So he's familiar to British fight fans. Um, and then he's also beaten Masito Gesta recently on uh, the 27th of January this year. That's another unanimous decision. So Linares, you know, he's flying high at the minute. His stock is high. Um, he's got 44 victories, three losses, 32 years of age now. Um, he's at a stage of his career where, you know, his stock is high, but... Talking about higher stocks, you don't get a much higher stock in the game than Vasil Lomachenko. Um, you know, widely thought of as a wizard of boxing, widely thought as one of the best technicians, if not the best technician, certainly in the absence of Floyd Mayweather Jr. Uh, Vasil Lomachenko is certainly looked at as someone with the best footwork, um, some of the best movement, uh, some of the best defence um, around in boxing. I think this will be an interesting matchup because Lomachenko is actually moving up. He usually, you know, recently he's been fighting at super featherweight. Now he's fighting at lightweight. Jorge Linares has always fought at lightweight. So, you know, that's his, that's his division. Um, a lot of people say that lightweight is Lomachenko's normal weight class anyway. That's his normal weight. Um, so he won't be affected by that. But, um, you know, it's certainly a factor that has to be flagged up in terms of considering this matchup. Lomachenko fighting at lightweight for the first time. Linares, who's established as a, at that weight, you would have thought that would suit Linares. But um, if anyone can get past a situation where you're moving up in weight, it's a magician. It's a boxing magician like Vasil Lomachenko. He does have a great uh, reputation. I've come, I mean, I've covered a few of Lomachenko's fights on this channel. Uh, he's always the huge favourite. He's always very short in the betting. And as a result, um, often... You you have to look at the opponent uh, from a betting point of view because his odds are, are usually so high. I mean, in this case, Lomachenko is widely available at sort of one to nine. Uh, there's one to tens. I mean, it's just a hugely short price, uh, one to twelve, which is fair enough for someone of his skill, someone of his stock in the game, someone of his reputation. I mean, he's, he's more or less thought of as a one-off and an all-time Hall of Famer already. He's only he has only really had eleven fights. Um, his record. If you actually look at the record, it's, I think it's 10-1. and one. He's got that loss to Salido. But, um, you know, most boxing commentators uh, look past that one. It was a contentious decision. And since then, he's gone on to prove what he's about. If you see, one thing about him, he's getting boxers to retire against him. He's getting, not retire from their career, but retire from the bout. He's stopping people in a way when they're having to give up. They're, they're not leaving their corner. Uh, <laughs> they're going to sit down and have a break at the end of a round, and they don't get up again. Um, you know, he's done that to Walters. He's done that to Rigondeaux last time out. Uh, he's just making people quit. I think he did it to Sosa, Jason Sosa. Um, so he's a fighter who's setting traps and causing problems that really high-level fighters, big names, you know, Walters, great career, uh, Rigondeaux, you know, he's sort of as a defensive marvel. You know, he's not always thought of as being the most entertaining fighter, but he's thought of being a strategic defensive marvel. And Lomachenko found him, and found him so many times that he actually had to retire. Um, he didn't have any answers. Uh, Rigondeaux was trying to do his usual off the back foot, you know, measuring his opponent, um, you know, lulling them into a full sense of, of security and then landing the big left hand. You know, it just wasn't happening against uh, Lomachenko. The, the traps weren't working from Rigondeaux. Uh, he just didn't get into the fight at all. It was a masterclass from uh, Lomachenko. And, uh, you know, he had nowhere to hide in the end. Uh, poor Guillermo Rigondeaux. He had to <laughs> remain uh, on his stool at the end of... Um, I can't remember what round it was, but one of the middle rounds, he just had had enough. So, you know, it's not normal victories Lomachenko is doing. He's, he's literally like a chess player, a boxer. And he's catching fighters all over the place and leaving them with no way of forming an offence against him and 
you know, that, I mean, I'm looking at the record now. His last four, so they retired. So Rigondeaux, Miguel Mariaga, Jason Sosa, Nicholas Walters. And then if you look at the three before that, they're all KOs. So he's really, even though he's not a masterful, power, he's not a powerful puncher. He is masterful in every way in terms of boxing, in terms of his footwork, in terms of uh, the combinations he, sh he doles out. Um, in terms of the traps he sets, his fainting. I mean, a second to none. There's no one with that skill out there at the moment. And it's just amazing that he's not really a power puncher. But because he's bamboozling his opponents, they're having to give up. And you'd think that no matter how good Linares is, you'd think he'd fall into that same category. Um, the bookies certainly think so. Uh, the question you've got to look at with the odds straight away is, is it worth taking Jorge Linares? Because th there's literally no point in being on... Um, uh, Lomachenko, unless you're going to lay in a huge amount of money, one one to ten, one to nine. Now you're getting seven to one on Linares. Uh, whenever, as I said before, whenever Lomachenko fights, his opponents at a price that looks, you know, enticing. Um, but I just can't see the way he's stopping people. I can't see anybody beating him. Linares is very good against stationary sort of people. Against Anthony Crawler, um, he you know, unleashed his flurries on him and looked very slick. I think Crawler is a good fighter. crawler has got great heart, uh, good endurance, but he's kind of one-dimensional in terms of his um, strategy and in terms of his boxing IQ. He just kind of has a peekaboo defence and motions forward. Um, and that sort of suits uh, Linares. Linares has got good hand speed. He's got good combinations. He has got flair and he looks good against people that, you know, their footwork isn't the best or maybe one dimensional in their offence. Lomachenko is not one dimensional at all. He's got about a million dimensions and that's the problem. Um, you can't say, he's fleet footed. His footwork's as good as anybody ever probably. Uh, he just uh, glides around the ring and he's widely applauded for that. If you listen to any of the top pundits, uh, Max Kellerman, it's always saying, you know, how, he impre how impressed he is by Lomachenko. Uh, it doesn't matter who you listen to. They're all impressed by him. And I just think Linares, as, as good as he is, and his offence is great, and he's had a great career, and he's flying high. I just can't see him uh, bamboozling uh, Lomach um, Lomachenko at all. I just think Lomachenko is too clever. Um, whether it will be a stoppage or not, it's possible. Uh, Linares does get caught. He has been caught a few times uh, in his career. Um, and so it's possible there'll be a stoppage. Um, but from a betting point of view, I don't I don't know if anything's there. I don't know what price you have to get when opposing Lomachenko for it to be value. Seven to one is high, and Linares is a very accomplished fighter. But he just he just looks pretty much unstoppable. I'm, I'm sure Orlando Salido would have something else to say about that, having got the victory over Lomachenko. But that was a, a long time ago. And just looking at this form line, you know, KO, 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 retired, 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 retired. Uh, Linares has got a load of victories. Uh, he's unbeaten for a long time, but they're all UDs, unanimous decisions. They're not really knockouts. Uh, if Linares is going to win, it's going to be a knockout. Can Linares land, you know, a few meaningful shots? I think he'll take more than one. Can he land a few meaningful shots to get Lomachenko out there? I think he can. It's a possibility. And as we know in boxing... Anything can happen. We've seen David Hay as a short favourite against Tony Bellew uh, twice in the last year and a bit, and Hay's lost twice. You know, it, it doesn't matter what you what you think in terms of there being a short favourite. There's always uh, the chance that someone with a little bit of power um, can cause an upset, and I think it's possible in this case. But Overall, I'm just going to say Lomachenko is going to win it. I don't think there's any value anywhere. You could go for some sort of mixed round betting. You could go for Lomachenko, sort of the middle rounds, sort of six to nine. Because I can't. I don't think Linares will be stopped quickly. Uh, Lomachenko isn't hugely powerful, but he bamboozles you over the sort of mid to long term. So could see uh, Linares getting stopped sort of round six to nine. But it's going to be interesting. Lomachenko going up in weight. Linares being the king at lightweight at the minute. It's going to be a tremendous fight. Please give your comments, give your opinions based on what way you think the fight will go. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.